Welcome, everyone. What you may have already noticed is we're responding to change. The title of the session you're going to hear is actually never been seen anywhere. It's how to create a high-performance agile organization in a VUCA world. How do we climb the mountain of organizational agility of high performance? So a bit of a switch from what you saw in the program, just to update you. So you already heard about this. My background is actually in IT. I got involved in very agile very early on. And I've been hanging out for the last 10 years in the place of culture and leadership of how do we actually create places where Agile can actually work. Uh, I've been a certified enterprise coach since 2010, so for quite a long time now. And I'm certified at Cal Educator. You can get this book. If you haven't read it already, people are still telling me how important it is to understand that Agile is a culture system. Uh, this session is not created by just by me, but my wife and co-trainer, Audrey Sahota. Um, so I won't say a, bit, a lot about her. But this is actually not just my work. Uh, emotional science, this is a book we did to help individuals, leaders uh, grow. Culture and leadership is everything I've learned in the last six years, the last book, which is forthcoming. This is where we actually spend most of our time. And I'm going to want you to understand this. You understand the information and where it's coming from. It's not only what I've learned in my career as an executive, as an agile coach and trainer, but what we've te taught thousands of leaders over the wor world, executive coaches and so on, how to create an environment where Agile can actually succeed, how to actually create successful programs that last. So I'm going to give you some advice before we dive in, some very important advice of how to get the most out of what you're hearing this time we have here together. It's this. The test of a first-rate intelligence, and everyone here is a first-rate intelligence, is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability function. This is what the hallmark of lifelong learners are, Agile about learning culture. And why this is so important for you is I'm going to say some things that are very different from business as usual. So when you hear something that, you know, it's very, very different and you believe something, you strongly believe something, just keep in mind is what I'm saying, could it possibly be true? Now let me show you one more thing to prepare you before I dive into what I want to share. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. offering is the truth, nothing more. The truth is that Agile is embedded all over the world. Agile runs software, software runs our abilities, our ability to innovate, and it's grown beyond software and so people are turning to Agile to run, our, run the business, create nimble, adaptable organizations. And at the same time, the truth is that agile failure is normal. 80% plus agile transformation failure rate. This is also the truth. So let's go to what do you think? This is time to take out your phone, open up a browser, and go to pullev.com slash orgs, O-R-G-S. It might say username when it asks you to fill it in. It's O-R-G-S. So put that in, and we're going to listen to you to see what do you think? What are you actually experiencing with Agile? So let's go here. Our biggest challenge with Agile are, and we're not looking for duplicate answers here. We're looking to listen to, hear what's going on in Toronto in October of 2018, what the challenges with Agile are. So if you have senior leadership as a challenge for you, please upvote this using your phone. 
If you're seeing people as a challenge, if you're seeing culture as a challenge, the real culprit, if you're seeing silos, if you're seeing any of these things, upvote them. My wife, Audrey, is from Chicago. The, the, the saying there is, vote early, vote often. So please, vote for all the things that you're seeing in your organizational system. We'll see what is being experienced around Agile. What are the challenges? If we know that Agile transformation is normal, what, what are the causes of this? So we can see a lot of answers, a lot of resonance. A lot of people seeing senior leadership, a lot of people seeing executive leadership in providing a safety culture, silos, lack of commitment, culture transformation, people. Let's take another moment here. So somehow people are saying, oh, with the challenge of Agile, how does it work if we had senior leadership showing up in certain ways? If we had these silos dissolved, where we're structured in ways that don't support us working together, that our culture needs to transform to change to a different way. We need to somehow support safety and have executive leadership operating in a different way. So let's keep on looking at this. It's like this, agile is like a round peg in a square hole and it doesn't fit in most organizations. That is the truth. And we're gonna talk about what do we do with that truth? Not to shy away from it, not to hide from it, but dive into that central truth. What do we do in face of this? So Agile is embedded all over the world. This is the truth. And it's failing. And we need to understand what we do about this to create success. That's what we're going to walk through in our time here together. So what's the reality of business as usual? What's happening in our organizations? Well, workers are disengaged. We had Jen Lim talking about that this morning, how we don't have happiness. Instead, we have disengagement in our workplaces. We've created workplaces where people are strongly disengaged. We have places where millennials demand change. There's nothing wrong with them. They just want a better world. They want products that actually work. They want to work in workplaces where their, their voices count, where they can contribute, where they can make a difference, to have meaning. Millennials are actually trying to help us build a better world through their demand for something different. It's actually extraordinary what's happening. We live in a VUCA world. VUCA was coined by the US military in the 1990s. It stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. This is the business world we operate in. It's changing fast, and not only changing fast, it, the changes are happening faster and faster. And what's the consequence of this? Our organizational systems, the way they're structured today, our business as usual, we're not able to respond to this. So as a result, our companies are going into business at a faster and faster rate. So business survival is optional. But let's just check in with you. What are you seeing in your organization? Here's a poll. My organization is set to thrive in a VUCA world. For example, we can compete with Google. Where are you in this? Strongly agree, neutral, disagree. What are you seeing in your organizational system? What are you seeing? This is great. We're seeing some companies here that are in strongly agree. So they're here to get better, to make sure that they continue to thrive. We're seeing organizations where we're seeing, oh, we're not quite set up that way right now. The people responding in neutral, strongly disagree, disagree. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about is how are we set up to thrive? How are we actually equipped to operate in a complex world? Okay, we'll give this another moment to let people can finish responding. How do we do this? How do we continue to make sure we can continue to thrive? What I'd like to help you understand here is a very simple equation. Business as usual, conventional business, equals low performance. The standard, normal ways of doing business are low performance. They're not equipping us to survive in a different world, in, in a VUCA world. So we need to shift out of business as usual. How do we do that? And how does Agile help us? So survival is optional. This is what we're looking at. If this is the world we live in, a VUCA world, like a tidal wave coming at us. How do we be the surfer? How do we be agile? How do we adopt and move with this wave? We can't fight the wave. The world is changing. That's the truth of it. How do we actually operate and thrive in this new world? 
And that's where the agile organization comes in. That's where we're looking at, well, how do we create a nimble, agile, little a agile organization that can operate in this kind of world? But let's just check in with here. When you think about agile, what are you seeing in your organizations? What are your reasons for agile? You know, and what we find in organizations, often people have very different ideas, but when we stop and take time to listen to why people want agile, we actually find out there's a lot of commonality. So let's listen here. What are people seeing? Speed, make money, agile, be popular, autonomy. What are you seeing in your organizational system for why people actually want agile? So we're seeing speed, make money, some people uh, invested in humor, uh, speed delivery, increased productivity. So people want speed, people want to make money, people want higher productivity, they want to be responsive to change. That's what organizations want. Actually, we've run this poll all over the world at meetups, at conferences, in trainings with executives, managers, coaches, and the reasons all over the world are the same. People want to create high performance. And we're talking about this, an agile organization thrives in a VUCA world. That's what we're going, that's what we're talking about. When we create an organization that operates this way, then we can thrive in a VUCA world. And I'd like to just notice something. Do you notice that this is not about Agile. It turns out nobody in the world actually wants Agile. What people want is high performance. What people want is the ability to thrive in the complex business world, to get results, to create success. That's what people want all over the world. And it's not that we get rid of Agile. Will Agile help us get these kinds of results? Yes. So it's about understanding, like we call letting go of the agile blinders, look at the broader picture of what organizations actually want. And it's this, they want an agile, or, or in air quotes, organization that thrives in a VUCA world. Remember I asked this, our biggest challenge with agile are this, and this is what the response you gave. We need an organizational system that resolve these challenges. Clicker, go. And why do we have these? Well, we have these challenges because our current organizational behavior is a result of individual behavior. So the way our organization functions, this blue triangle on the outside, that's because all of our people within our organization are operating in a certain way. We have certain behaviors, certain mindsets, certain ways of being. Now remember you said this? Speed, make money, quick delivery, responsive change. Well, what does that mean? How do our people need to operate? If our whole organizational system operates that way, how do our people show up? Well, if our whole organizational system is this different way of working, this green wiggly line representing our new way of working that's high performance, all the behavior inside need to be different. We need different behaviors from people at all levels of our organization. So a new organizational behavior, a new organizational outcome requires new individual behaviors, a new way of being. So if we look at this, we're looking at how do we grow from our current way of being, our current way of operating into a new way of being and a new way of operating. And that is what will allow us to survive in a VUCA world, that will allow us to thrive in the future. A new way of working requires a new way of being. We can't simply adopt agile practices and hope everything will work out. We know what happens with that. We do not get the results we're looking for. We actually need a new way of being. So how can agile deliver a new way of being? How can we actually get that? How can we create this possibility for ourselves? Albert Einstein said this, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. We need a fundamental rethink of Agile. Because the way we're going with Agile is failure. Agile is failing us or we're failing Agile as a community. Because as a community we're not able to help organizations thrive in a VUCA world fully. We're able to get partial success. How do we actually fully unlock 
the potential of Agile. We say it's through a fundamental rethink. Wave one of Agile is about concepts and ideas. It's about collaboration. It's about energized teams. It's about the concepts and ideas. Wave two, or living Agile, or being, is about fully living what Agile's talking about, the mindset, responding to change, and showing up with a new way of being. That's what Agile's actually talking about. And when we lose that aspect of, our, of Agile, we lose the benefit that it holds. This is what we're talking about as wave two of Agile. It's the evolution of Agile. It's a deeper understanding of Agile itself. It's the change we've been waiting for to allow Agile itself to unlock our success using Agile to create high performance. Now, why, why is this? Let's re just review some basics that hopefully everyone here has already seen and know. That Agile practices and doing Agile is not the same thing as, this clicker's not working as well as I'd like, as Agile mindset and being Agile. Bob Hartman noticed this some time ago, that this is a fundamentally different thing, that we can do the practices without the mindset, and it does not give us the benefits. That's why when we talk about unleashing the full potential of Agile, we need the doing and the being. We need both. It's not that we, one is better than the other. We need both the doing and the being to unlock performance in our organizations. So this is where we talk about our model of consciously approaching Agile. What does it look like when we approach Agile from this different consciousness that has both the doing and the being? Well, we want to survive in a VUCA world. What does it take for us to survive in a VUCA world? Well, we need an Agile way of working, new ways of working, DevOps, digital. This is what we need to thrive. And if we have a healthy organizational environment and culture system, It'll just work. Everybody knows this. When your environment's supportive of Agile, you can just invite Agile in and it will just work. Most of us are not in that situation. Most of us are in the situation where we do not have a healthy organizational environment. We do not have a healthy culture that actually fully supports an Agile way of working that will allow us to thrive in a virtual VUCA world. We don't. Well, what if we don't? Well, who are the people who are, oops, who are the people who are creating the organizational and culture? It's actually the leaders at all levels of our organization who are creating that. Well, then how can we actually change that? Well, it's all of us showing up in a way that invites those leaders to show up in different ways. Whether if you're a manager, it's inviting the people who report to you, inviting your peers, inviting the people who you report to, to invite them to show up in this new way of working, the being. And that's what Wave 2 is all about. It's about all of us at every level of the organization, every role, operating in this new way that will create this whole organizational shift towards moving to a different way of working that will allow us to thrive in the world that we live in. This is a simple, simple math of how we can actually create this result. On your tables, some of you may grab this. You want to grab a sticker to remind you of this consciously approaching Agile. This is the fundamental rethink, the fundamental shift. So how can you get there? Let's be very, very practical. So it's not some you know, idea, principle, and so on, but it's very practical for everyone here in this room. Let's just start by looking at the past. I caused damage in the name of Agile. Let's start with the confession. It's anonymous. It's anonymous here. So how have you caused damage? And I just want to let you know, everything you write here, I've probably done in my career and learn that it does not lead to success. It does not lead to high performance. How have you caused damage in the name of Agile? Rushed it, yep, I've done that. Pushing, oh yeah, I've done that. Created a lot of damage. Command and control, yep. Thought I should tell people what should happen. I've done that. Old habits, oh yeah, this is all about deconditioning ourselves from our behavioral habits that are actually causing destruction. Cared more about process than results, yeah. The agile, agile scrum police, yeah, I've done that. Forcing it, making people do it. Preaching, yeah, agile evangelist. Anyone agile evangelist out there? Yeah, stop it, please. Right. It just causes damage. 
Great. So we'll give this another moment to see what people are agreeing. Forcing Scrum and everyone. Yeah. If you have an agile rollout plan, you're pretty much um, doomed. That's the word, doomed. I'm sorry. I said I was going to tell you the truth, right? I mean, the truth is with an agile rollout plan, some people will get it and they'll say, oh, finally, we can do what we wanted to do all along. And some good will happen out of it, not through the actual rollout, but just accidentally through it. So now let's flip the scales and look, real change happen. When? When did you see real lasting change and real impact happen? What were the behaviors? What did you see happening? What did you experience? What were the behaviors? So we can see a couple of people are having, using Bob as a way to escape looking at their own behavior. Um, that's okay, that's normal. That's how our brains are designed to avoid going into psychological pain to seek pleasure. Uh, that's actually what blocks our learning. So um, I invite you not to fall into that trap. Um, so people listened, we changed, there was passion. Uh, I'm sorry to hear changes not. As you look at anywhere in your life where changes actually happen in any context, there's culture change, empowerment, trust, mindset change, passion. So listening, passion, mindset change, culture change, empowerment, trust. We started behaving in different ways of working. Yeah, we changed, we listened. So I'm going to do a demo here. Can I get a demo subject up here on the stage? It'll be safe. I promise. Could I just get someone to come up here? A volunteer? Great, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Let's Hi. move up here. Ramesh. Ramesh. Great, thank you, Ramesh. Um, so Ramesh, I'm just gonna hold my hand and I'm gonna push. All right, so I'm, I'm pushing. Um, he doesn't look that strong, but I'm pushing really hard and he's not moving. So uh, he's, you're doing a great job resisting me. Thank you. Your, your resistance is amazing. Now keep on resisting me. No, come on. You were doing it before. What's wrong? Okay, wait. So, wait. I want to, everyone now, point to the person creating the resistance. Point. Point to the person creating the resistance. Everyone, point. Why are you pointing at me? What's going It was him. Or was it? Who, cre uh, who caused the resistance to stop? Who did it? Who could stop the resistance? I did. I stopped pushing. I became irresistible. If you want to become irresistible, the secret is to stop pushing. Thank you so much, Ramesh. So I'm going to tell you very practically, no matter what your role is, how to create energized, motivated, passionate people around you. So here we go. Here's how to build resistance, and here's Agile. How to create resistance guaranteed every time is that you push. You push. Now, Agile's built on the premise of push, right? Or no? No, Agile's built on what? Pull. Oh, sorry. Whoops, I got it wrong. So if you're doing any pushing at all, if you're doing any of the stuff in the resistance or red list, you are not living Agile. You're in wave one. If you're doing any of the red list, you're trapped in wave one, and we're inviting you to become aware of that so you can join wave two and start to be the change that we want to see and what Agile is really about and to unlock how to use Agile itself to create incredible results. So start pulling. Well, what does that mean? Let's unpack this and be very specific. In the red list world, business usually, we try to convince people. We sell, we evangelize, all that. And instead, we want to inspire them. That's what green list behavior looks like. We need to, you need to change. We need to transform. That's not what creates success. What creates success is people who want to. We invite people in and we say, hey, do you want to do this? And they have passion and fire in their bellies. That's how we create long-term successful change. Make or drive, we make people do things. We drive, who's heard of we need to drive our change initiative? We need to drive results. Yeah, all we do is create a push and we turn people off. Instead of that, we want to invite people. We want to invite people to create something extraordinary. That is how we create success. Tell, we tell people what to do. Instead of co-creating, 
High performance leaders co-create with people. Sell. Let's pause for a moment. Has anyone ever called you up on Sunday afternoon to sell you something? Yeah? Or knocked on your door? Or in a store tried to sell you something? What does that feel like inside your body when someone tries to sell you something? Just think about it for a moment. Feel into that. It's like this icky feeling, right? How do you successful do you think you are trying to sell Agile, giving people this icky feeling inside their body? You're not. You are actually the problem here. This is the good news, bad news scenario. Through this red list, green list, the resistance list, the Agile list, we're helping you understand how you are creating the problem by not living the Agile mindset and how you can create the solution to create the success you want. And you don't need an authority, you don't need a budget, you do not need approval. You can just make these changes yourself immediately, regardless of your role, regardless of your level in the organization. I've had a lot of people talk to me and say, oh, that leadership, they're not ready yet, they're not doing this. Well, we can make these changes at our level. Listen, great salespeople listen to you. They say, hey, what's going on for you? What are your challenges? What do you want for yourself? And they help you be successful with that. Now think about this. Look at this list for a moment. Who's ever been to a good party? Anyone ever been to a good party in your life? Just raise your hand if you've been to a good party. Some people here haven't, it looks like. Okay, that's okay. unfortunate. Maybe, maybe tonight there's a good party after this. Um, um, which list was used to build a good party? Just shout it out. Hmm? The green list, yeah. The green list. Agile is aligned with what it takes to make a good party. If you want to have energized, motivated people at your party, you use the green list. If you want to have energized, motivated people at work to create an organization that can survive in a VUCA world, you use the green list. I'm just speaking the truth. This is common sense. But business as usual, how we've been conditioned in the families we grew up in, by our education systems, by business as usual, by society, have taken us to operate in a red list way, in a resistance way, in a way that creates harm and damage. So it's time for you to discuss now in pairs. I'm going to tell you the instructions, then we'll say go. What are my behaviors that are blocking my success? So ask yourself this question. What are your behaviors that are blocking your success with organizational change? And here's the list. So uh, this is a conference. You can use this for networking. Stand up. Everyone stand up. Meet someone new and discuss in pairs. What are your behaviors that are blocking your success? Everyone stand up. Get into pairs. Meet someone new and discuss these two things. If we're talking about moving to a new way of working, that's fundamentally what we're talking about, to create a new way of working that requires a shift in behaviors. We're only going to succeed when we're ready to look at our own behaviors. It's not about other people changing behaviors. So if you're a manager, an executive, a scrum master, a coach, it's not about other people changing their behaviors. It's us looking at our behaviors and changing them. That's what's going to lead to the change. So how do we succeed with Agile anywhere in any organizational system? I'm going to give you a key download here. It's a really extraordinary piece of advice that works all over the world. It's this, create a culture bubble. It's, we don't need Agile to be everywhere in an organization to be successful, to have a higher level of performance. The most common way that Agile has actually ever succeeded in our organizational systems, which are these square holes, we get little bits of round peg inside of them. That's what this green is up here. It's a different way of working. It's a culture bubble. And what happens is there's one leader who gets it, and they can create this culture bubble. This is how we practically can create change in your hierarchical organization that you're in right now without asking for a revolution. Revolutions are not going to happen, or at least not the way you think they're going to happen. So the focus of creating success is to simply just focus on creating your success and not worrying about everyone else. That's the secret. Now, the way we make this work is around it, we have these things called adapters. 
that inside the green bubble we've got one way of working, one culture system. Outside we've got a different culture system, a different way of working. So we need to have adapters to help us adapt from the outside world to the inside world. So outside world will ask us for things like, please give us a status report. Please give us a project plan. Inside the bubble we go, that's a complete waste of time. We have the customers right here. There, there's no reason to do this. It's a complete waste. Now you can do your agile evangelist, go batshit crazy on them. I've done that. It doesn't work. What does work is respect. Respect looks like this. We're okay inside our bubble. You're okay outside the bubble. You have your way of working. We have our way of working. We respect your way of working. We don't think it's the best choice, but it's, you, know, we're, you're not, you're, you don't report to us. We can't tell you what to do. So to respect you, to respect that you are being asked by your boss to get the status report, you're being asked by your boss to get this project plan, we're going to give it to you, right? We may negotiate to see if we can give it to you in a different format or in a way that takes us less time, but at the end of the day, we're going to respect you and give it to you. That's through that process, what happens is in our little bubble of different way of working will fit in with the rest of the organization. Otherwise, if we don't, well, let's just talk about how we do this. If you do this, um, what happens is it takes extra effort and extra time. Yes, absolutely. It does. Put up your hand if you pay taxes. Anyone pay taxes? These are the taxes you have to pay for the privilege of having a culture bubble inside this organization. What happens if you don't pay your taxes? They come and get you. They will come and get you. This is, I've ch checked this out all over the world. They will come and get you. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And what happens, what do they do to come and get you? What happens is a green leader, they take them out and they replace them with a new leader who's green or blue. Blue. And the culture bubble collapses. And maybe there's some smaller culture bubbles lower down. This is the standard way that Agile succeed and then subsequently failed in organizations all over the world. It's probably happening in your organization. Who's seeing this happen in their organization right now? That they're in some sort of culture bubble. Anyone seeing a culture bubble? Right? And if you're the leader of this bubble, you know it's very difficult because you're very being, you're acting adapter for one culture system to another culture system. Right? That's why it's so taxing. And you may be asked to do things on the red list. And a very simple trick you can do is to say, well, oh, we have to do this. Oh, I can't get out of this. Hey, team, we have to do this thing. What do we want to do about it? Let's co-create a solution because we have to do it. How are we going to pay our taxes? How are we going to work with the rest of the organizational system? Now, of course, a lot of you are passionate and want to create inspired change in your organization. So you're dying to know, well, how do we make it grow? If we don't tell anyone outside what to do, how do we actually make this grow? Well, we know the red list, selling, convincing, all this stuff doesn't work. But what does green list mean? Green list means we're patient. We wait. We invite. And when people are ready, we go help them. But we don't try to make it grow faster. And instead of trying to make... So I'll tell you the number one, tra the number one failure mode is this. Inside the bubble, you go, look. Oh, we're so cool. We got this new way of working. It's so great. Everyone should come do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And it puts a big target on your back saying, shoot me, please. So. That's the truth. Please don't do that. Just be respectful of the rest of the organization. And what will happen is if you focus on quiet success, you're a good corporate citizen, you help the teams around you be successful as well, what happens is the person in charge of the bubble will get promoted. And then the bubble can spread. Right? So either wait for people to ask for help or you just do a good job and build your quiet success and wait for the long-term growth. That is how culture bubbles grow in organizations. It's a tried, true pattern. Every time we try to rush, we push, we go faster, we actually create our own destruction. So the secrets here are create a culture bubble and build adapters to stay healthy and be patient and allow growth to happen in its time. So leaders, leaders lead. Leaders lead. What does that mean? This is like the last or maybe one of the final secrets I want to share with you. We said that organizational growth is a result of personal growth. That when people in an organization shift from one set of behaviors to a new set of behaviors, they model this new way of working, living the agile mindset, this new way of being. That's what's going to allow us to grow and operate a new world. It actually requires personal growth. It requires people to say, yes, I want to change how I'm showing up. 
So if we draw this differently, we can see every person in the organization to move to a new way of working, to thrive in a VUCA world, we need everyone to grow. And part of the secret of making this work is allowing people to grow at the rate they're ready to grow at. Right? So not rushing people. We don't like to be pushed. We don't like to be rushed. It's allowing people to grow at the rate they're ready to grow at. And one of the biggest secrets here is that leaders go first to inspire others. That when you have a leadership team going first, it's like a bird flying in the front. This morning, Jen Lin was talking about birds. When we have a bird flying in the front, all the other birds can fly behind them with much less effort. That is the secret. When leaders go first, it makes it much easier for everyone else in the organization to move to this new way of being. Now, because of the magic of culture bubbles, we don't need top leadership to go first. We can create change at any level of our organization. Now, how did I get this epiphany? How did I get to this understanding of all these things I've shared with you? Um, well, this is my epiphany, is be agile first. When we operate and live in an agile way, we can create the change we want to see. It's about how I choose to show up, how you choose to show up. Viktor Frankl said this, between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. This is what we're talking about. Everyone here is a conscious human being. We all have a choice about how we choose to show up, how we choose to respond. When we pay attention to the choices we're making, we can create a very different world for ourselves. We can create a world where we're fully living this agile way of being. So how did I get this awareness? How did I get this understanding? Well, I was working as an agile coach, trainer, helping organizations move to a new way of working. And what I noticed is regardless of, I was working with organization after organization, and I noticed I wasn't fully satisfied. I wasn't able to help them be as successful as I wanted to them wanted them to be. And what I realized is that whether I was working with a manager, a director, a VP, a CEO, that the, their consciousness, their way of being, their, their grasp of the agile mindset was always the limit. And I realized that to create high performance environments, to create the results I wanted of really extraordinary companies which have great places to work, that I needed to help these leaders grow. There's no other way. And then, one, then I really looked at myself. I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Michael, can you help these leaders grow to this new way of working? Are you really living the agile mindset, this new way of working yourself? And the answer I got back wasn't very pleasant. The answer I got back was, no. The answer I got back was, Michael, you're a well-intentioned asshole. That was the truth. And I looked at myself and I said, well, I've got a choice. I have a choice. If I want to create the success I want, if I want to create high performance organizations, I need to help leaders grow. And if I, for me to do that, I need to grow myself first. So I had a choice to either grow or give up on my dream. The reason I'm standing before you here today is to share with you, I didn't give up on my dream. I chose to grow. I chose to grow how I'm showing up. I chose to work through my leadership edges. I chose to bring exquisite attention to how I'm showing up so I can model the behaviors that I'm talking about. It's not about teaching leaders, it's not about coaching leaders, or the people who report to us, the people we work with. It's actually all about how we choose to show up, how we model the behaviors of Agile, how we model this new way of working. This is the single most important thing. And this is the news item, the news flash, is that you go first. Uh, has anyone ever heard this on an airplane? Anyone ever heard the safety briefing? I call this, you know, the laws of the universe or common sense. Before assisting another person, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Before assisting another person, Put the oxygen mask on yourself first to make sure that you're actually living and modeling this agile mindset, this new way of working. Well, what does that mean? It means before helping someone you're coaching, you make sure you're actually operating in that way. If you're a manager, an executive, before helping the people who report to you, 
before helping your peers, before helping the person above you, you actually check in to make sure that you're actually living and operating this new way of working. You've actually looked at your behaviors. Mahatma Gandhi has this, be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. And that's all I'm really talking about here. Like I discovered this truth for myself, is that when I change how I show up, I change how other people may show up, and I change what's actually happening in the world around me. That creating reality actually starts within us. And I'll tell you a story from Gandhi to, to illustrate this. Gandhi was a very conscious individual. He was, actually was able to liberate India from the British, which is an extraordinary accomplishment through nonviolence. It's an extraordinary accomplishment in the history of our civilization on this planet. And people from all over India came to ask him for help because he was a great sage, this great conscious leader. They asked him for help for these unsolvable problems. And there's one woman from a rural village. Her son was eating too much sugar. And she tried everything to get him to stop. She'd gone to the doctor. She'd gone to the priest, the psychologist. Nothing was working. And of desperation, she took her son. She traveled on a bus for 24 hours to where Gandhi was. She waited in line for hours until she finally got in front of Gandhi. And she turned to him and she said, Gandhi, this is the situation. This is my son. She explained the whole situation. Gandhi listened very patiently. He said, ma'am, I can help you, but not today. Come back in one month. And the mother was so joyed, oh, Gandhi's going to help us solve my, solve my son's problem. This is a miracle. She took, she took her son. She traveled for 24 hours back to the village where she lived. She waited the one month very expectantly. And after a month, she took her son, traveled for 24 hours back to where Gandhi was, waited in line for hours again. This is how determined she was. She finally was in front of Gandhi, and she started to relate her whole story again. And Gandhi said, no, 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 ma'am. I, I remember who you are. I know who you are and who your son is. I can help you today. And the mother was so excited with joy. And Gandhi looked at the boy and said, boy, stop eating sugar. And the mother was like, what? That's it? But then she looked at her son. And she could see the words had gone deeply into him and that a change was taking hold. And with her mother's intuition, she knew that the words were going to work to make the change, the miracle she'd been hoping for. And she was so excited. She started to get filled with joy. And then she goes, wait a minute. Why, why did we have to travel? And she started shouting on Gandhi. Why didn't you say this a month ago? Why did we have to travel back and forth? We had to travel all this long way. And she was just so beside herself. She shouted on this great sage. And Gandhi just waited patiently until she stopped. And she said, he said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. But a month ago, I was still eating sugar. So I'd like you to discuss in pairs. So stand up, meet someone new. How will am I to look at my behavior and grow to get the results I want? How willing are you? From one to 10, what number do you have? And then share what it is you're willing to look at in your behavior so you can change and be the change you want to see. So stand up, get into pairs, and discuss. So when we look at behavior change, we know it's hard. We wrote this book actually specifically to help us as leaders show up in different ways because emotions actually hold the key to change behaviors. All our behaviors are actually fueled by emotions and emotional charges, so uh, it's available. So let's integrate everything we've talked about. Anyone heard of this guy? <laughs> Episode four, A New Hope. What I'm sharing with you is what I see as a new hope for Agile. Wave one is dead or dying. Wave two creates a space and a possibility for us to create revival and hope. And it's really about how to succeed without budget, authority, or approval. Even though we say leadership is critical, all of us can operate as leaders to create the change. All of us at all levels can create changes within our organization. This is a message of great hope. Because of the magic of the red list and green list, of how we create resistance and how we operate in an agile way, we don't need any approval, authority, or budget to change our behaviors, to operate in a more agile way. Simply by changing how we show up, by creating that awareness of ourselves, we can create a place where we can get actually move to a more agile environment simply through our being. Let's just check in with you. To have the impact that I want, it's important to grow myself. Where are you? 
Where are you? What's true for you? For those of you who aren't strongly agree, welcome to wave two of Agile. Welcome to wave two. It's not about others and making them. It's not about process. It's not about tactics. It's not about roles. It's not about Scrum. It's not about Kanban. It's about us to choose to show up in a different way of working. That's what wave two is about. So welcome. So in conclusion, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that, that created it. This is what Einstein said. So we need a fundamental rethink of how we're approaching things. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on creating the same old, same old. A new way of working requires a new way of being. That's what a new way of working means. To survive in a VUCA world, we need to operate and behave in fundamentally different ways. A fundamental rethink of Agile. So this is what we call consciously approaching Agile. There's stickers that have this. And really, wave two is about this different way of being. It's, it's a, the doing and the being. And that allows us to show up in ways and model new behaviors that in, allow us to invite leaders to show up in those same ways of working. And when leaders at all levels, we want leaders at all levels of our organization, that's what high performance is. When leaders at all levels show up in a different way, we create an organizational and cultural environment where we can invite an agile, DevOps, new ways of working, digital, and it'll just work. It'll just be common sense. We won't have organizational impediments around it. It'll just make sense to everyone. It'll be embraced. And this together, all of this, is what will allow us to survive in a VUCA world. So this is what Wave 2 of Agile launches us when we start with ourselves and we look at our behaviors to live the mindset. It's the evolution of Agile. It's the change we've been waiting for. And to, to close this off, 10 years ago, I was sitting together with three other guys. We were having beers. It was after Agile 20, 2008 had just finished. We said, well, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had an Agile conference here in Toronto next year? And we, we were just four guys saying, well, what if we just do what we want to do? We just live with our passion. Jen Lim this morning talked about passion. We said, what if we just create this? What if we just do this? This is what living Agile is about. It's about being and operating, showing up in a way to actually create change. And so 2009 to 2018, here's the photo from 2010. This is the team we had at this time, which includes the founders of this community, the people involved. This is just a big thank you to say when we go first, when we show up, when we put the effort in, when we make the change, we can create the impact on this world. Everyone here has felt the impact of this conference, the connections, the networking, the speakers, everything here that this is how all of us, by saying yes, we can make the change. There's a free book download of this book if you want to read more about how Agile is a culture system. It's on our website, jilltricks.com. And thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and a great honor to be able to close this conference. Uh, there's a closing after this, but thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>